Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk through the life cycle stages of the firm. When a firm first starts off, it's usually a single product or a single service that's being offered. And if the, if the firm survives its very early stage, then we generally see that the firm has rapidly increasing markets and earnings. And so that's the introduction and the growth stages of a firm's life cycle. Uh, typically, during these periods of time, the, the company has high profit margins because there's not a lot of competitors out there yet. Uh, there's heavy reinvestment. And later on, what we're going to see is we can classify firms in their life cycles based on their cash flows from operating activities, cash flows from financing activities, and cash flows from investing activities. And so what we usually see early on is that there's cash flows from investing activities are negative because the firm is investing money and not selling its assets or its investments in order to get cash. And we'll actually see that later on in the life cycle of the firm. There are little or no dividends because reinvestment offers high returns. So what that means is that whenever the company is profitable and has extra cash from its operations, it's taking that and it's plowing it back into the company. And as a result, the company is not paying out dividends. They're also not repurchasing stock during this uh, time period. Growth eventually slows as competitors enter the marketplace. The big difference between the introduction stage for a firm and the growth stage is that during the introduction stage, cash flows from operating activities or CFO is negative and for growth, CFO is positive. One key thing I want you to know about the difference between these stages is that if a firm has their initial public offering during their introduction stage, that's often not a good sign and there's a much higher a probability of a firm failure or bankruptcy if they do this. This, uh, this is because they're going public in many of those cases in order to generate funds to support their oper operations and not to support uh, further investment and growth of the firm. So I'm just going to make a little note down here. If a firm has their initial public offering or IPO during its introduction phase or introduction stage there is a significantly higher likelihood of firm failure the firm isn't failing because they're having their IPO during their introduction stage, but it's because that they need um, they need the extra cash to support the operations of the firm. So typically, um, for for a more successful likelihood, is when we see a, a firm have their IPO during their growth stage, at the point where they they have positive cash flows uh, from their operating activity. So in other words, the stuff they're doing generates enough cash flows to support those operations and whenever they go to you know the the markets then and have an in initial public offering then they're using those funds either to the the proceeds of that initial public offering either to pay back the initial investors of the firm so they can get some of their money out of it and or to expand the operations of the firm to be even more profitable and generate even more cash flows but if the firm has not is not at that point yet where they're generating positive cash flows from their operating activities and they go public at that time, that's a that's a pretty good signal that um, they may be running into some problems. So so let me show you an example of this. Uh, we don't see a lot of introduction stage firms um, out there uh, because. Uh, if a firm doesn't have positive cash flows from operating activities, they generally don't survive long unless they can turn that around. So we're going to take a look at Tesla early on uh, in their public life, in its public life out here. So I'm going to pull up Tesla's um, statement of cash flows. 
back way back in 2006 when they initially went public so it's been a long time ago and you can see they weren't generating a whole lot of anything back then and they weren't really selling cars yet but they needed to get funds uh, for their operations so we can see here um, the cash flow from operations their CFO was negative it's small but it was negative but we can see even continuing on uh, for several years after that, that that was a negative value until uh, 2013 was the first year that Tesla had positive cash flow from operations or act operating activities and then it got negative again for a little while and stayed negative until 2018 so until really I mean we had that one year here in 2013 but other than 2013 Tesla didn't become a growth company until 2018 they were in that introduction period um, where they were not generating enough cash from what they were doing from selling vehicles to cover their operating activity uh, cost uh, the the next the next cash flows we look at when we're, we're you know examining the life cycle of the firm are the uh, cash from investing and you can see here it's negative 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 all the way through and we expect that because they're continuously investing money in op in in their um, you know their property plant and equipment in order to build more vehicles and increase their capacity to do that and so that's a very normal thing and, and uh, a fine thing to see for for most companies you'll see that throughout their life and then finally cash flows from financing activities you see these are positive here okay. after a firm gets out of its growth stage those start to become negative so you can see here that actually for for Tesla that became negative in 2021 what that means is they're shifting the company is shifting from you know issuing bonds or issuing additional equity to bring in funds to expand operations to having enough cash flows uh, from their operating activities to start to pay either pay back their their debts to pay down some bonds and that's exactly what Tesla is doing here is uh, when you see this negative cash flow here in 2021 that means they're actually paying out money um, and paying down their debts um, at this point in time um, you'll also see here for a lot of firms this is where they start to pay dividends and or start to repurchase their stock but we'll come back to that uh, here in a minute let's go back out to the the document so that's that's the introduction and growth stages it's where very fast growth usually uh, is occurring for the firm during this period of time they're kind of getting their feet underneath them and they're start if they're successful they start to grow okay? and they have positive cash flows from operating activities the next stage is the mature stage so during this stage the return on reinvestment in the firm and i have here roe for return on equity because that's really what it is uh, whenever the firm has excess income and they don't pay that out as dividends they're they're plowing that back into the company and that is actually a form of equity for the firm that's the retained earnings for the firm and so the return on those retained earnings is the return on equity for the firm during the mature stage we get to a point where that ROE is equal to the required rate of return for the firm now I want to make a note here because we had a strange situation uh, following the financial crisis in 2009 and 2010 about that time where we had a long period of time of very low interest rates and so we didn't really see this happen so much with mature stage firms uh, during that time because what they were doing was that a lot of these firms that were in their mature stage and I'm going to show you an example here in a minute what they were doing was they were taking out a whole bunch of debt because it was so cheap and they were using that debt the proceeds from it to repurchase shares of stock so they were changing their capital structure and a result of the, that change in capital structure is that their return on equity would either get really high or it would get weird and I'm going to show you what I mean by that uh, we're going to take a look at a company um, for, for which McDonald's where they, they actually repurchased so much stock that their their equity on their books became negative and so the ROE if they calculated it would have actually been a negative number but um, I just want to make a note here that we didn't see this 
very much. in the decade following the financial crisis. Because firms issued low interest rate debt and used the proceeds to purchase excuse me, repurchase their stocks. And this threw off the return on equity calculation um, because of the a portion of that return on equity comes from the capital structure of the firm. And as the firm takes on more debt, holding all else equal, they're going to boost that ROE number. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna go out and you know show you an example of that here in a minute. The other things we see during the mature stage is that earnings, dividend payout ratios, and return on equity stabilize to long-term rates, um, and that earnings and dividends grow at the mature growth rate. So, you know, what is that mature growth rate? That mature growth rate is usually in the range of two to five percent. It is a combination of the population growth rate and the rate of inflation. So let me uh, kind of explain that a little bit. If we have a company uh, who doesn't sell any additional units of goods from one year to the next, so let's say it's a car manufacturer and you know, in 2023, they sell 20,000 cars, and in 2024, they sell 20,000 cars. The revenues for the company that are going to grow from one year to the next just because of inflation, because the cars they sell in 2024 are going to have a higher price than the cars they sell in 2023. And so the revenues, and then the earnings, and the dividends, and all the things that follow that are going to grow along with those. Um, those revenues um, because of inflation. Now we add in population growth because, well, even mature companies and, and ones that really have saturated their markets, their market is going to grow based on the rate of population growth. So if there's more people buying products because the population is growing, they're going to sell additional units from one year to the next as well. So we have additional units being sold because of population growth, and then we have an increase in the price that those units are sold at because of inflation. And so long-term growth rates tend to follow that. And so that's where that two to 5% comes from. In the United States, we have a population growth rate of about 1% a year. And then in, in stable times, our rate of inflation is about 2% a year. So it, you know, a combination there of about 3% um, for, for a, a number for a long-term growth rate, but it, it you know, it shifts between two and 5% there. The next bu bullet point I have there is that the cash flows from financing activities become negative. So that's our third uh, item on the uh, statement of cash flows. Uh, cash flows from operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, and then cash flows from financing activities. These become negative as firms switch from having net increases in external financing. Either, either they're issuing increasing amounts of equity um, or they're, uh, they're increasing additional amounts of debt. Um, they go from that to paying out more cash to investors, either through paying down debt and paying out cash to stockholders, uh, than the amount of external financing being received. I'm going to start with the example of Walmart as a mature stage company. And then I'm going to, sh going to show you a couple of um, other ones out there too that are pretty common to see. So I'm going to uh, pull up here. Walmart as an example of a mature stage company, and we'll start off by taking a, a look at its statement of cash flows. And we don't need to go back to 2006 here. We'll, we'll look at a few, uh, a few more recent years. So here I've got the last four years uh, for 
for Walmart. And this is their statement of cash flows. So we see their cash flows from operations are all positive. And for a mature company that's expected, the company is well established. It's able to generate enough cash from its operations to pay the cost of those operations. And that's what we see here. Um, in the most recent year, we see that Walmart had a cash flows from operations or operating activities of $28.8 billion. So pretty, pretty good job there. Um, we see cash flows from investing activities at $17.7 billion and that's negative. So that means that they are investing in their stores, they're investing in their fleets, their, uh, their, their trucks and, and moving product around. And, and so they continue to do that. Um, you can see here the line item capital expenditure is the largest item that they have there uh, with their next largest much, at a much lower rate being cash acquisitions where they're buying up companies or assets so that's negative and again nothing wrong with cash flows from investing activities being negative we kind of expect that for a firm um, that's that's healthy and 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 moving through its life cycle cash flows from uh, financing activities this is what the difference is between um, a grow a firm in, uh, in their growth phase and a firm in their mature phase is that this is going to be negative they're paying out cash now. They're generating a lot of cash from operations. They don't have a lot of great investment opportunities, so they have excess cash that they're generating. And so these uh, cash flows are paid out to investors and it shows up here under the cash from financing activities. Um, we see here in 2023 that they repurchased $9.9 .9 billion in stock and they paid out $6.1 billion in dividends. We can see in the same year, and this is what I was mentioning before, that they issued $5 billion in debt. And so what was happening here is that they issued $5 billion in debt and um, they paid out those proceeds uh, in the forms of repurchasing common stock probably. Um, usually common dividends paid out uh, come from uh, ongoing um, operating cash flows that can be relied on in the future. So a firm generally wouldn't take the proceeds from debt being issued and paying those out as dividends because the, the proceeds of the debt being issued is a one-time cash flow while they, they need to count on cash flows for dividends to be paid out in the future. So that's one example of a mature firm i'll just show you while i while i've got this pulled up the ratios here so that one item that said that the roe would be equal to the return required rate of return for the firm the roe for walmart here i've got it right here return on equity isn't terribly high here so you could feasibly say that um you know, looking at the 12 months ending January 31st, 2023, a re return on equity of 12.8%, that could very feasibly be the required rate of return on their stock. The required rate of return on the average stock um, over the long run is about 11% uh, in the stock market. So 12.8% isn't too far off that. Um, we're going to look at some other firms, though, that are in that mature phase where that doesn't really apply. So the next one I'm going to show you is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a mature firm. We'll be able to take a look at their revenue growth and really see that. So um, before I, I move over to the revenue growth, because I've got the ratios pulled up here, you can see their ROE is extremely high for a mature company. You can see here the 12 months ending December 31st, 2023, the return on equity was 40.2%, which is really high for a, a company as old and established as, as Coca-Cola. They don't have a lot of great investment opportunities that would generate that kind of growth. And really what is happening here for this entire time period is that Coca-Cola has been taking on debt and using that debt to repurchase stock. I'm going to briefly go out to their income statement here to kind of explain what I mean by them being a, a constant growth, kind of slow growth company. You can see here uh, 2018 to 2019, 
um, their growth was uh, their revenue growth was less than 10 percent and actually it had picked up from previous years um, this was the time if you remember uh, coca-cola had a marketing campaign where they were putting people's names on uh, bottles and so you know this was actually a, a great uh, marketing campaign for coca-cola it increased their sales uh, during that 2018 2019 time period because people would see someone's name or their own name and they would go pick up the bottle and they'd buy it for that reason and so they this was actually a fairly successful marketing campaign uh, 2020 you can see that their sales actually dropped um, by a little bit more than 10 percent from 2019 to 2020 that was the result of covid then they popped back up in 2021, but if you take a look at the difference between 2019 and 2021, not a lot of growth occurred there either. So, so very little growth. We see some additional growth happening in 2022, um, but still this is not a, a fast growing company in terms of their revenues. They're kind of on that long-term growth um, rate area in their life cycle. They've saturated their markets. They, they don't have a lot of new markets to move into. So that's what we're seeing here on their income statement. Uh, going over to their balance sheet, this is where I'm going to show you why their return on equity went up so much or got to be so high. Um, if you take a look down here at the bottom, under this treasury stock item, we can see that they have repurchased a lot of their own stock. And here at the end of 2023, they had repurchased by that time a total of $54.5 billion of their stock back. And what's been going on is that they've been taking on more and more long-term debt. And we see that they paid off a little bit of it in 2023, but you can see um, back here in 2018, they had $25.4 billion in long-term debt. And in 20. 21 and 2022 it's about the same amount 38 billion dollars worth so an increase of 13 billion dollars worth in long-term debt over that time period and they had been using some of this to repurchase stock um, and that's going to really alter their capital structure and increase the return return on equity i'm gonna go over now and well just to just to show you that the this is a mature company uh, based on the measures we're using, I'll go to the statement of cash flows. So here you again, you can see positive cash flows from operations, negative cash flows from investing activities, and then negative cash flows from financing activities because they're paying out that cash. A lot of dividends. Um, Coca-Cola pays out a lot of dividends and they repurchase quite a bit of stock too. Not nearly as much as the dividends are paying out, but they're actively repurchasing stock every year. The last one I'm going to show you because it does give us kind of this very odd return on equity is McDonald's. So without a doubt, McDonald's is a mature firm. Uh, they have again, saturated the markets. Uh, you know, any city you go to of any size is going to have probably multiple McDonald's anywhere in the world you go in most places in most cases you're going to find a McDonald's in everywhere that you know where it would be acceptable so we'll take a look here first again to establish that this is a mature company uh, we see cash flows from operations are positive cash flows from investing activities are negative so they're continuing to invest and invest in their their uh, operations and and uh, their facilities then finally cash flows from financing activities are also negative those three things together make it classified as a mature firm now let's go out to their retain return uh, return on equity for their ratios And we're actually going to see a neg uh, a um, an error term here. So you see NM, 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 NM. Um, if it was calculated, it would be a negative number, not because the numerator is negative, the the net income, but because the the value of common equity on the books for McDonald's is negative. And 
a long time ago, we would have actually seen that as a bad thing about the company because for for equity, the common equity on the balance sheet to be negative, we would have expected this to be due to losses. Uh, so continued losses, um, negative income, reducing retained earnings and making it negative. But in more recent years, because of an increase in stock repurchases, a company can repurchase enough stock where the the contra equity account of, of treasury stock becomes so large that it overtakes any retained earnings and any uh, common equity that was initially invested into the company making the the value of equity on the balance sheet negative so I'll just show you this so this is the balance sheet for McDonald's and I'm going to go down here to the total equity and the common equity account so you see the the treasury stock here is 61.5 billion, 66.3 billion, 67.8 here, 71.6. McDonald's has been repurchasing a lot of stock. Um, they haven't released their December 31st final uh, financial statement here, so we don't see the treasury stock value, but we do see the equity value still being negative here. And again, this isn't a negative thing for McDonald's. Um, it, all it means is that they've repurchased a lot of their stock and so much that it's actually turned their total equity value negative because they've repurchased more in dollars of stock than than has been retained uh, by the company and was initially invested in the company by stockholders. And so those are just a, a few exceptions to this comment that I have in here that the ROE equals the required returns. And again, that's that's kind of a, a temporary thing because we had such low interest rates for so long that it encouraged companies to take out debt and use the proceeds of that debt to repurchase their stock. And we're going to talk about that later on uh, in the course. So those are the, the introduction stages, the growth stage, the maturity stage. Now we're going to move on to the decline stage. And many firms don't actually get to this point. Uh, a lot of firms uh, just continue on. We've, looked, we've seen several of them today already. Uh, McDonald's, uh, Walmart, and Coca-Cola are firms that have been around for decades. They've been successful. They're in that mature phase, and they're just kind of hanging out there. Um, but it can happen that a, that a company does go into decline. Um, in this stage, demand for the firm's products or services declines, resulting in declining revenues and earnings. Dividends decline as the firm can no longer generate sufficient earnings to maintain past levels of dividends. CFO becomes negative or cash flows from operating activities become negative as the firm can no longer generate sufficient cash flows from its operations to maintain its operations. Cash flows from investing activities, that CFI, becomes negative as the firm sells. Actually, that's not right. Sorry, I apologize here. That should be positive. Let me change that. CFI becomes positive as the firm sells its long-term assets and or divisions to maintain earnings. And that is a very negative sign for a company uh, when they are at that point when they're 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 essentially selling their seed corn. Um, they're selling the things that they need to continue to operate to generate cash for their operations. Negative growth rates may be, the, may be used to value the firm using dividend or free cash flow models. In some cases, firms are valued based on their liquidation value at this stage. So we're going to use the example here of Sears. We can't use the present example of Sears because Sears is no longer in business. So we're going to take a look at Sears uh, back in 2018 as an example of a firm in decline. So you can see here uh, their financial statements don't go out um, beyond 2018 here. They're, they had a press release where they issued some numbers, but it wasn't a, a full financial statement back in May of 2019. I'm going to pull up here their statement of cash flows just to show you what that looks like. So we can see here cash flows from operations for many years. 
were negative just across the board here. And so what that means is that they weren't generating enough cash from selling items in, in Sears stores to pay for the cost of their operations of, of, of owning and managing those stores. So that's a, again, we saw that in the introduction stage and we hope that companies quickly get out of that stage or they won't survive. The difference here between the introduction stage and the decline stage is this number here, the cash from investing or CFI for, for a firm in its introduction stage, these are negative numbers because it means the company is investing uh, in the firm uh, with, it, with the cash that it's generating from its financing activities. In this case though, we can see that during this entire period of time, uh, this six year window into Sears, Sears was actually selling off its assets in order to survive. So we see here in 2014, um, sale of property, plant, and equipment, $995 million. Uh, we see in the next year, $424 million, and then a divestiture of $173 million. The next year, um, they had other investing activities of positive $2,600, meaning they got $2.6 billion in cash from, from selling some investments that they had. Um, and you see it every year here, where they're either selling assets, divesting of something, and getting rid of the assets. And what was going on during this time was that uh, Sears was selling off parts of its business. So in 2014, it sold off Land's End, for example. Um, it's been selling, it was selling off its brands like Craftsman and Kenmore during this time. And really the things that made Sears money and made Sears profitable and have value, they were having to sell in order to generate cash uh, for for the operations, continuing operations of the firm. So a, a very negative sign for a company when we see this. Cash flows from financing activities. Um, in most of these years, they were positive. So if we take a look at, we'll just take a look at 2014 here to see what was going on. During this year, they had issued a lot of debt. During the next year, they were issuing debt. During the next year, they were issuing debt. So they were not paying. Well, in this year, it was negative because they were they repaid some debt. But in the following year, it was positive again. Um, again, because they're issuing more and more debt during this time in order to stay alive. Okay. They, were, they needed those to be positive for the company to have additional proceeds to keep the company alive. And then finally in 2018, 2019, the, the company declared bankruptcy and no longer exists. So those are some examples of the different stages and what we look for during those stages uh, of the life cycle of the firm. Down below here, um, I, I've done a lot of research in this topic area and I found that this, um, this table down here really helps explain and helps us identify companies. And it's been cited in a lot of research as a kind of a simple way to see where a company is in its life cycle. So as I've got up above in the text, a firm in its introduction stage has negative cash flows from operations, operating activities, negative cash flows from investing activities, and then positive cash flows from financing because they're taking on more debt or they're issuing equity in order to fund their growth. And then the next stage again is the growth stage. The difference between the two stages being cash flows from operating activities go from being negative to being positive. And we want to see that for a firm. The difference then as the firm continues to grow and mature, stepping from the growth stage to the mature stage is that we see the cash flows from financing activities go from being positive to being negative. So what's happening here is that the firm in the growth stage is usually issuing more debt, but they can also be issuing more equity in order to fund their growth, to put the money into the firm to fund growth. At the mature stage, they're really good investments at that point. Um, the, the firm is running out of great investments. And so what they're doing instead is you know, they're funding the good investments that they do have, but they're generating more cash from their operations than they have good investments. And so they're starting to pay those out then, either paying down debt, uh, paying out dividends or repurchasing stock or all three. 
Then Dickinson, uh, actually, uh, she came up with these two stages. Well, this stage here called Shakeout. And she said, you know, sometimes we see cash flow patterns for a firm that aren't covered in the different the other different ones that we have uh, stages that we have and that's where these fall so where we have positive operating um, cash flows positive investing cash flows and i'll come back to that in a second and then it doesn't really matter financing cash flows can be positive or negative um, those could be in the shake shakeout stage because remember the positive cash flows from investing activities indicates the firm is selling off parts of its business okay, it's divesting of its business and so that's not usually a good sign for a company when they're doing that um, on the uh, for the other option here for the other shakeout we have negative operating cash flows which is a negative sign usually for a company they're not generating enough cash in order to fund their operations negative investing cash flows just means they're putting money back into the company and then financing cash flows are negative meaning that they're paying out debt um, or or you know, paying down their debt or paying out uh, to stockholders either dividends or stock repurchases and again this is something we don't commonly see it's kind of rare to see um, these but she put those out there because they do exist and they need to be accounted for in the life cycle stage finally we talked about the decline stage and the defining characteristic of the defi de decline stage for a firm is that they have negative cash flows from operating activities so they're no longer able to pay uh, for their operations from the funds generated from those operations and they have positive cash flows from investing activities and again what that means is the firm is usually divesting or selling off its um, assets in order to fund its operations so not a good sign for a firm finally firms often try to extend the growth phase uh, using changes in strategy or business mix Technology may also change the duration of the growth phase. Nevertheless, the stages here are a useful approximation for many firms' phases. Uh, one thing that we do see companies try to do to extend that growth phase is diversify. Uh, so you can have a firm that you know goes from a one product firm to a many product firm because they're trying to diversify. They're trying to maintain that growth. Uh, the, find new good investments for the firm you know unfortunately most of the times firms aren't terribly successful at doing that um, and but that that's a d discussion for a, a later uh, video or later um, portion of the course please let me know if you have any questions about this video